One of the most common questions I've been getting on my LLM tutorial videos is how do I build this app with a different LLM to the one being used in the video? If you're using Python and Langchain to build your application, then switching LLMs is really easy. It's just a matter of using one of these LLM integrations and then plugging it into your app. There are currently dozens of different large language models, LLMs, out there right now for you to choose from. This includes OpenAI, Amazon Bedrock, and Google Gemini, and they all have different capabilities, performance, and pricing. So instead of trying to figure out which is the best one for your use case, it's probably a better idea to just make it an easy thing to change inside your code. That way, you only have to build your app logic once, and then it's just one line of code to switch it to a different LLM. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do that in a Python application using the Langchain library. We're going to build a personal finance application that uses AI to analyze a bank statement and then categorize its transactions. We're also going to have it write some Python code to sum each category and then give us the final result. But the app itself isn't the important part. What we're going to focus on is how we can use Langchain to build the logic for the app and then switch between three different LLM providers really easily. The models we'll be using for this app are going to be OpenAI's GPT-4, Claude V2 via Amazon Bedrock, and then Google Gemini Pro. As you'll soon see, this is all super simple to set up. It's crazy how easy it is to become productive with these technologies in such a short time. And by the end of this project, we're gonna see how all three of these perform on the same problem using the same set of data. Let's get started. First, let's build the base application. The code is gonna be available in this GitHub repository if you wanna follow along. You'll also find a link to this project in the video description. You're gonna need the following dependencies, so make sure to install them in your Python environment. First, we'll need the Langchain package to build our application logic. Then, we'll need these additional client SDKs from OpenAI, AWS, and Google depending on which LLMs you want to use. Or you could just install all of them right now as well. The goal of this app is to read a bank statement and categorize its transactions. And here I have a sample bank statement in CSV format. It's got a date, a description, and the amount spent. But as you can see in the description, there's actually different company names like Walmart, Netflix, etc. I want to use AI to turn these company name descriptions into one of the following categories that I've predefined. So for example, Netflix might become entertainment and Starbucks might become eating out. I wanna do that for all of my transactions so I have the amount spent expressed as a category instead. And once all of my transactions are categorized, I want to have my app write some Python code to sum them all up by category so I know how much I'm spending in each category. I'm actually gonna be using the output of the first part of the app to hard code those values into the Python script that I will ask my app to generate. Now, this is a pretty basic problem and it's not actually really important what it does. I just wanna put my app through a few hoops so that we can use it to demonstrate how to apply these different AI models from the same code base. Now, to get started, you can either clone this project or create an empty one. And the first file we're going to make is a bank statement file, and we're going to name it bank underscore statement dot CSV. The CSV file should look something like this. You can use your own data if you want to for this project, or you could just go to my GitHub and download the CSV yourself. The app that we're going to write is going to use two prompts in sequence. The first prompt is going to ask it to categorize each transaction. The second prompt will use the output from the first one and ask it for a Python script to calculate the total sum for each category. We'll then use Langchain to create templates from these prompt strings, and then we'll create an LLM chain from these templates. We actually haven't initialized this LLM variable just yet, but we're gonna do that in the next chapter when we plug in our first LLM. We'll then connect these two chains into a single sequential chain. Now, when we use this chain, it's gonna run the first prompt with the LLM we've chosen, and then pass that output into the second prompt. And you can do all sorts of crazy things with Langchain, but for now, this is just a really simple example to get us going. Once our chain is ready, we can read that data from the bank statement CSV file from earlier, and then pass that into the chain as input. By the end of this video, you should have an output like this after you run it. You'll have each transaction categorized, and then a hard-coded Python script to sum them up that hopefully gives you the right answer. If we go back to our code editor, then this is what our project currently looks like. We've got our line chain imports at the top and then our prompt templates here as a string. And then here we're putting together our app with the templates, the chains, 
um, and then actually calling the chain with the bank statement. And if we click over here as well, they should be a bank statement CSV file with all of our data. Um, and notice as well that this LLM variable isn't defined yet. So our app is ready, but it doesn't have an LLM. Um, and this logic is the same no matter which LLM you use. So as you'll see really soon, all we have to do is just define what this LLM is. And it can be OpenAI, it could be Amazon, or it could be your own open source LLM. And then we just have to plug this in here and everything should just work. So now that our application code is prepared, let's go and implement our first LLM. To use it with OpenAI, first go to the OpenAI website and create an account. Get your OpenAI key from it and set it into your environment variable. You'll also need to install OpenAI into your Python environment if you haven't done that already. Back in our code editor, we'll use this line to create our OpenAI LLM. And here I'm also giving it a max token count of 1024 um, because by default, I think it's way smaller than that and it's not enough to test our app with. Currently, the client will use GPT 3.5 by default, um, but here's how you can switch it to using GPT 4. Or if you want to use a different OpenAI model, just check into their documentation what model names are available and just plug that into this uh, constructor instead. And once you've initialized the client, you could use this variable directly or you could just alias it to LLM so that it's easier to swap out in the model later. And as you can see, that's what I've actually done in my own project. So this way, if I use LLM throughout my app, all I have to do is change this part of the top uh, and I don't have to touch any of this stuff below if I want to swap to a different LLM. So putting it all together, this is what our app currently looks like at the moment. Now that the whole thing is wired up, let's run it. And here are the results of the run. Over here, you could see it executed the first part of the chain where it's categorizing each transaction line by the category that we specified. In the second part, it's then used the output of that, which we've provided as um, an input parameter to the second prompt, to create a Python script uh, that can calculate the sum of all categories. So now I'm just going to paste that entire piece of code into an empty Python file, and I'm going to try to run it to see if it works. And here you can see that the script runs successfully and that it gives us the correct result. If you really wanted to take this a step further, you could probably write your own unit test or something um, that actually has the correct number for each of these so that when you try different LLMs, you can actually have a way to compare the quality of the output. But that's a little out of scope for today's video. For now, let's move on to the next LLM. To use Amazon Bedrock, you'll first need an AWS account and you also need the AWS CLI. If you don't have those yet, then I'll put some links in the description on how you can set them up. And if you haven't enabled Bedrock yet either, you have to log into your AWS console and then go to the Amazon Bedrock service. For this, you need to use the US East One region or any of the other few regions that it is available in. And then go here to model access and then make sure that you've enabled all of these models. Um, if you haven't enabled them yet, then you can click manage model access and then just tick all of them and then click save. Now back in your Python environment, also install the AWS SDK. It's called Boto3. Now, LLM Bedrock isn't actually a model. It's a platform that offers you several different LLM models you can choose from. One of these includes the Claude V2 model from Anthropic and the Llama 2 model from Meta. And here are the IDs of the models that we're gonna use. This could change later, so just double check the documentation to see what the latest model name is because we'll need it to initialize the client. And here's the code to create a Bedrock client using the Claude model. If you want to use the Llama model instead, just switch out the model ID to the one you saw earlier. You'll also have to make sure that your AWS CLI is set up with a default profile that uses the same AWS region that you enabled your Bedrock models in. For example, US East 1 or whichever region you ended up choosing. Your credentials will also need to have access to call Bedrock. So unless you're an admin user, you might have to go and make sure that you enable those permissions first. With the client ready, we could just go ahead and substitute the LLM for the Bedrock one and run the app again. Here's what my code currently looks like. And this time, the results are slightly different than what OpenAI gave us. And if I copy the script into a file and try to run it, then it runs successfully and gives us the correct answer as well. Finally, let's try this out with Google Gemini Pro. First, you're gonna need a Google API key. You should be able to go here to get one really quickly. Once you have it, put your API key into your environment variable. And if you didn't do this at the start, also install the Langchain Google Gen AI library. Back in the editor, this is how you can create a Google AI client. 
we're going to use the Gemini Pro model, again with max tokens of 1024. And just like before, we'll plug this into the rest of our code and run it. And it should just work. And here the script seems to run completely fine. And the Python script it gave us seems to work as well. So now, if you're at this point in the video, you've built an AI application with some custom logic that you can switch between three different LLMs just by changing this one line. This is going to make it really easy to experiment so you can see which one works best for you. Now, if you want to use a different LLM that I didn't cover here, then it's pretty much the same process. If you head over to Langchain's LLMs integrations page, there is a massive list of all the different LLM integrations supported right out of the box. A really popular integration is Hugging Face. I haven't had a chance to use it myself yet, but quite a lot of you have asked about it. So it's here if you want to try it out. And if none of the integrations fit your use case, or if you have an open source LLM uh, that you want to run sort of locally, then you also have the option to just implement your own custom LLM class. You can do that by just extending this custom LLM interface and then implementing each of these functions. There's only three functions, so this should be pretty easy to implement if none of the LLM integrations from before fit your use case. I hope you found this video useful. And by the way, I'm always looking out for new ideas for projects or tutorial videos using generative AI. So if you have any requests or suggestions, please share them with me in the comments. Otherwise, see you next time.